next episode of Not So Speechless. Today, we have Colleen and Megan from the Next Steps and Best Buddies program. Thank you guys for being on today. We really appreciate it. Of course. Yeah. So I'm Megan and I'm a freshman. I'm a special education major. So that's kind of how I found Next Steps. Um, I wanted to come to Vanderbilt actually because I knew that there was a lot of opportunities to work with and around people with disabilities. And so that's how I found myself here. (laughs) I'm Colleen. I'm also a freshman and a special education major. (laughs) And kind of the same thing. I came to Vanderbilt for the program and how amazing it is. And I kind of found next steps through that. First semester, I didn't do next steps, but I found myself really wanting to get involved more and next step has been like the perfect opportunity (laughs) and best buddies as well like it's just it's really improved my quality of life here and I just love it a lot and we met a bit earlier at I think it was disability awareness week at the neurodiversity and mental health event yeah so what have you guys been up to since that event I've like just been living life I guess like Um, Next Steps is like one of the main orgs that I do, but I also do club volleyball and some other small commitment type things around campus. Um, So besides those things, I've just been like eating food with my friends and doing homework. Um, I've kind of been doing the same. Next Steps takes up like a lot of my time because I love going to like the extra, you know, events and stuff. I think we both do that. We both go to like all the mixers we can and I work at the preschool on campus. So I do that four days a week, which is super duper fun. So that takes up a lot of my time too. Studying for finals that are coming up. And yeah, just hanging with my friends. Just enjoying the last weeks of being in Nashville. For those of you that don't know about your background, where are you guys from, by the way? So I'm from many different places. Um, Most recently, I lived in Seoul, South Korea. I was there from eighth grade to 12th grade. Um, And then in the summer before school started, I moved to Florida. Yeah, mine's not that cool. I am born and raised in Boston, so. Okay, no, Boston is awesome. (laughs) <laughs> yeah true <laughs> i'm from uh, bangkok but we do eat a lot of korean food so yay yeah <laughs> love korean food yeah korean food's so good really quickly megan but what's the difference between korea and florida big <laughs> big differences if you can name a few yeah, there's a lot of differences um one of the main differences is food. Not many Thai restaurants are around here or not many Korean restaurants are around here. Yeah, very true. A big difference is definitely the food. Like around Nashville, or at least around Vanderbilt and even around like where I live in Florida, there's not a lot of Korean food. But besides the food, I think when I compare my high school experiences, like with my friends here who went to school in America, even though I went to international school in Korea, so I still had like APs and I took my classes in English, um, everything seemed to be a lot more intense, like just based on the competition around me, because it's kind of the culture there to just like study all the time, which is like a stereotype, but it's like true. That is is true. I, I get what you're saying. That is true. Yeah, so I think just kind of like my experiences like in high school are very different. And Colleen, is Boston really different from Nashville? Um, it's a lot less different than I thought it was going to be. I thought like the political climate was going to be very different, but it's really not. I think that might be because we're really kind of like in a bubble in a city and on a college campus. So like I haven't found it that different. The weather is definitely a lot nicer in the winter. Um, Like usually I'd be walking to class in like less than 20 degrees in Boston. So some days, so it's been nice. Like it doesn't really get below 30 here, which has been like perfect for me. But I do like miss the snow a lot. Like we didn't get a lot of snow. But other than that, like, I haven't really noticed that big of a difference. How did you guys get involved in the Next Steps Ambassadors program and um, Best Buddies? Yeah, for me, um, first semester, we had, like, a special education seminar. What was it, like, SPED 110? 
1175 maybe. Uh, my oh, favorite no. class <laughs> ever. I love I love that seminar. Was it really early this year or no? It was at nine, I think. Okay, right? we had the 8 a.m. Yeah, I think Dr. Capizzi did tell us she used to teach it at 8 a.m. <laughs> and that seminar we had to do volunteering. Um, and a lot of people chose to do next steps as part of like their volunteer hours. Um, I like actually didn't choose that as my volunteer hours. I kind of did it like at the same time as a different volunteering thing, but that's how I found out about it at first. Yeah, kind of same for me. I did different volunteering. I did National Dolphins, which is um, swim instructing for my volunteer hours. And then over winter break, I knew I kind of wanted to get involved more on campus. So I did like the training for next steps over break, and then I got assigned for the next semester. And then Best Buddy is kind of the same thing. I wanted to get more involved, so I joined in the semester too. Yeah. Um, do you feel like there needs to be more representation of, I don't know, Asian Americans with disabilities, more representation, or just a normal person that's wheelchair bound or has autism? What are your thoughts on different disabilities? Well, I think more representation is always good. Mm -hmm. I know you mentioned like um, Asian people with disabilities. And I think here, at least at Vanderbilt, there's a lot of diversity um, in the Next Steps program. But when I was in Korea, um, it's kind of like a taboo subject to talk about disabilities. Um, and they, there's always separate schools. There's not really any like inclusion classrooms or anything like that. So I think definitely like, although America has a lot of issues in terms of representation and like fairness between people with disabilities and people who don't or typical people I guess um I think it's weird to say this but America is like doing pretty good in comparison to other countries um but there's definitely is a lot that still needs to be done um, yeah I mean I agree I I don't have the experience of being in a different country but I think it's important to recognize someone's disability and recognize how it makes them who they are and that's not a bad thing as like a lot of society like makes it out to be you know I think everyone's different in so many different ways and like we're both completely different people but like that's not a bad thing you know so I think as a society and especially as a campus I think it's important to like recognize that and work on inclusion in that aspect what brought you guys into special education yeah um the reason why when i was in elementary school i went to a school in actually michigan um and it was very inclusive and i had a lot of peers around me um who had different disabilities um and i noticed that they were treated kind of differently by not only my classmates but also like sometimes even my teachers um and that really upset me because i felt like they were being kind of overlooked, like not seen as capable. So ever since then, I kind of wanted to be more involved in that community. But when I moved away, I realized like um, how unaccepted a lot of people are differently at all. Like even if they have different learning styles in the classroom, like it's really hard for them to kind of do well in school. Um, and I even saw that, you know, you said family members, my brother as well, my younger brother, um, he learns differently. And because of that, he's always like been kind of lagging behind in school. So just all of these kind of factors in my life and things that I did see or didn't see um, made me like even more passionate about studying um, special education. Yeah, I think for me, I've always been like very accepting. Like, I don't know, it was never like someone with a disability never looked different in my eyes since I was like really little. Like, it was never like a taboo thing for me. In middle school, I joined Best Buddies and I was the only like um, general ed student to join. So it was just me and all my friends from the special education program. And I just made like the most amazing friends there. And I eventually became a PCA for one of the students, which is a personal care assistant. So that's kind of how I got involved in that. And then I also took my friend to his swim lessons, who he works with a swim instructor, and she offered me a job right then. I've been doing that for five years. So since I joined that club in eighth grade, like I kind of just, I always knew I wanted to be a teacher, but that's when I realized that I wanted to do special ed and it hasn't wavered since then. So, yeah. Do you think disability is being shown 
a lot in the media perspective, like in, like in TV shows or in movies. Yeah, I think like representation has been going up as people are becoming more kind of aware of all different types of peoples of people in society. Um, but I think still like we're in need of more representation and like also more actors with like the disability being portrayed. So I, I think like more representation like from actual people with the disability in the script um, is pretty important. But I think representation has gone up recently, but always good to have more. <laughs> I agree with Megan. I think that if you're making a film or a TV show about a disability, I think it would be amazing if someone with a disability was actually playing the person with a disability. I think that would be a lot better for representation and authenticity and also just giving opportunities to people with disabilities because like there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to portray and help people learn about their disability. And I think that would give like a much better perspective on it and really aid in the media. Um, what do you miss most about your home besides the food, like me? For me, well, I don't really know necessarily what to call home because I have a lot, but um, I guess the longest place recently has been school. And so I, I just miss having so many things to do. Like I could just get on the subway for like 75 cents and go anywhere and like do anything and here. It's a little harder like calling Ubers or like waiting like 40 minutes for the bus. So it's a little harder, but yeah. Yeah, I think I definitely just miss the like familiarity of Boston. Like I live in a suburb about 10 to 15 minutes away so like I could always just I have a train station like right next to my house so like like she said I can just hop on the train with like my Charlie card and get on <laughs> and be in Boston in like 15 minutes. What do you hope that students with exceptional needs especially should like if they look at someone with a disability what support can they give that kid or how can they support that student in the classroom or if you're a teacher assistant how can you help out in the classroom I, I think that's kind of a tough question because it's really individual like um, you can't really give a super specific answer because I think the most important part is to just look at the individual learner or individual person and see like how they feel about certain things or how, what they prefer um, and then based on their preferences and how they learn best, then you can go from there. Yeah, I agree. I think it depends on the individual student talking to them, asking what they need and, you know, going by that and like what their parents think that they need and like their teachers and like people that are really close to them and what they think is best for them, but more importantly, what the student wants. Um, and just like knowing that they're, you're a safe person for them and that you're gonna fight for them and advocate for them, I think is one of the main parts. If you were to tell your younger self something you didn't like know before, what would it be? Um, I think I didn't know anything <laughs> like when I was younger like what did I what did I know like there's just <laughs> too much I didn't know but I guess like I would just tell myself like you'll find like really good friends in the future um and you'll really enjoy all of your phases of life um and just like keep surrounding yourself with good people I think yeah yeah, I think I would tell myself, like, it's okay to make mistakes and to learn, like, while you're going and, you know, everything's going to work out. So don't stress that much because I used to be, like, a huge stressor. I still am sometimes, but I think I'm a lot more chill now. And just, like, you know, everything's going to work out and you just got to trust the process and trust that the universe is going to take you where you need to go. So, yeah. Yeah. Where can people find you on social media, Instagram, Twitter, email? My Instagram is MeganPack underscore. My Instagram is Colleen Mercer with an extra R at the end because Colleen Mercer is already taken. <laughs> um, and yeah, if you want to email me, you can just DM me or if you want to talk, you know, whatever. 
Any organizations? Mm, the uh, Next Steps Ambassadors Instagram or? I'll plug that, Elijah. I'll plug that. <laughs> Please do. Yeah. Roll next step. Uh, roll next step. <laughs> um, yeah. Any questions? Like, I think we're both really receptive to questions and we really want more people to get involved. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be working with recruitment for Next Steps next year. So if you have any questions, please reach out. We'd love to have you. Pauline, I'll help you out. Yes. I'm, I'm so ready for a peach. <laughs> Um, well, thank you again, uh, guys, for joining us, and uh, we hope you guys have an amazing day. So yeah. we'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, yeah of Bye. course. Bye. Bye.